Welcome to a new episode of Blockard News. My name is Brenda Lucia Descartes and I'm founder of Blockard, the local art portfolio where we represent 40 Latin American artists, which 30 are from Peru. Before telling you about our special news of this week, let's first think outside the block. Today's news, well, we got in local news that Rembert Yawarkani and Christian Benzajan, this Peruvian duo of blocker artists from the Amazon region of Peru, organized a fundraising event to help the citizens of Pebas, Rembert's hometown, during this pandemic time. Plus, we go all the way to UK and Banksy did the same thing. He auctioned a triptych through Sotheby's last Tuesday and all proceeds went to the aid of Bethlehem Hospital. Want to know more? Well, stay tuned. Our special guest artist, we got Stevens Vaughn, conceptual ritualistic artist from Minnesota, USA. And I met him a couple of years ago through a contemporary art fair in Santiago de Chile named Chaco. So are you ready for this? Mediterranean Sea View 2017, that's the name of the triptych done by Banksy. And that was under the hammer of Sotheby's last Tuesday. Let's check it out. The works had been on display in the world of hotel that Banksy helped set up in 2017 in Bethlehem. The trio of paintings were initially expected to fetch $1.2 million when they appeared in Sotheby's Rembrandt to Richard's evening sale. The process will go towards building a new acute stroke unit and buying children's rehabilitation equipment for the Bethlehem Arab Society for Rehabilitation. Oh. July has been our anniversary month. Yes, we turned five during a pandemic and although it's very harsh times, let's remember something, art will prevail no matter what. So our team is really eager to keep working and also bringing up very special deals for the following week. In case if you are interested in acquired paintings or sculptures, well, just drop a comment, send us a DM with your email or contact info, and we'll be in touch. Peruvian duo of Amazonian artists Rembert Yaworkani and Christian Bendejana have helped 70 families, yes, bringing up different products, essential foods, and also a machete. Yes, this will help this grandfathers and parents to harvest yucca in the fields and also to create a path into the jungle. Where this happened? Well, Pebas is a town and hometown of artist Rembert Yawarkani and as he was there during the lockdown and all this entire time, well, he was really, really worried about the entire situation. So far, there's been 344 cases of COVID-19 and 16 lives lost. Counting, of course. Let's hope that they, there will be no more loss there. And I think uh, that this is a true, true, authentic, collaborative, synergistic bringing as a consequence solidarity action. Uh, this all started with a phone call between them both. They are very good friends. They, they've they been working in this uh, art local scene for many years. And um, I think that this really creates a change to the lives of the ones who need the most. So kudos for both of them and everyone around you. So today is a special guest artist. His name is Steven Zvon and he was born in Minnesota, USA. Um, it's a conceptual ritualistic artist who documents through pigments the language of water. I met him a couple of years ago in a contemporary art fair in the capital of Chile, in Santiago de Chile, and the name of the fair was Chaco. I totally connected with the energy that he brought up to me and I just dig and love the philosophy that he follows, the nation philosophy that you find in perfection in a state of perfection. So here you have him. There's an ancient Chinese proverb that I think pertains to where I'm at right now in life. They say a bird does not sing because it has an answer. A bird sings because it has a song. 
in life, as an artist, as a, I think we are all artists, if you consider my Fluxus influence background, we are all artists. We all have the ability to create a piece of art from our lives. The art of life is much more interesting than the life of an artist. And this brings me to the point now, two philosophies talk about the potential of space and nothingness. That we, are, we need these periods to reflect. Or are we just not evolving, but are we trying to preserve something from the past? Preservation of art principles are death. We know this. We are in a period of space of potentiality, where we as a group of artists working with everybody in every capacity have the ability to build a post-COVID renaissance. Time and space have come together to this moment, and we are called upon to evolve. The work that I'm work or art, I've heard it called art, I'm working on now, is to build a throne. I built thrones before, but I want to build a throne on the beach. And whereas before people would climb up, the lifeguard that would stand is very similar to a throne, sit in the chair and look over the vast, powerful ocean. In 2020, the person who's sitting in the lifeguard chair should be looking at the ocean because the greatest thing in danger in that environment is the ocean. They should be looking at the ocean because if the ocean dies, we all die. And I would love to build two thrones, one set out in the ocean and one set on the shore, so that we can realize we are looking at each other. We, the ocean is, is conscious of us and we are conscious of the ocean and the people. But they are not separate. The space between the people is a space of potentiality and ma. It can be dangerous and it can be beautiful. Don't ask if I'm an artist. Presume that we are all artists. Don't ask if I'm a businessman. Don't label me. Because the worst thing when someone labels you, you believe that label and you become that label. And the fluid river of color of the 21st century, I can only hope that we give up labels and start seeing people for the color and beautiful and the art that they bring to our lives. I was once asked, what's the most beautiful piece of art you've seen in the world? And I said, that's a very easy question. For the smile of your friends is the greatest art you will see at any time in your life. I just loved about giving up labels, first of all, and yes, that's true, once you believe this, then you just make them exist. Second thing that he did, he said, and I really want to highlight is like about this post-COVID renaissance, and third thing is about the most beautiful piece of art that he has seen is the smile on his friends, for sure. And I, I'm a 150% believer that you can just share a lot through a smile. Not even saying a word to someone that you don't even know at all. Um, I want to thank you a lot, Steven, and your team, Joe also. For making this happen I know that this is a very small collaboration but it really means a lot and um, I, I just um, I won't ever forget about that time while walking the fair just listening to someone that was singing opera and I could see like all of this colorful energy that you literally paint on your a artwork and but I could see it through well you were singing in fact and could catch your vibe so I'm really really thankful about that and um, I know that you are super busy right now checking out different projects in Asia and not only here in South America so thanks for that 
Well guys, so this was everything for today's app and I really hope that you enjoy it. So don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell so you don't want to miss any of our upcoming episodes, drop a comment, don't feel shy and well, what else? Be skeptic, keep safe, question everything and think outside the block.